remember that we are looking for strong words in the passage that are basically going to tell us what the claim is that we need to, to satisfy here. To you is an 1856 poem by Walt Whitman. In the poem, Whitman suggests that readers whom he addresses directly, that sounds very specific and strong, have not fully understood themselves, okay? Not fully understood themselves. Writing, blah, 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 right? So I don't care it's a poem. Doesn't matter to me. I'm not scared by that. I have two ideas that I need to match, right? He's addressing them directly and he is they are not fully understanding themselves. So let's just see what we get. You have not known what you are. Okay, well, not known what you are sounds like not fully understanding yourself. And the fact that he says you sounds like he's addressing them directly. You have slumbered upon yourself all your life. Your eyelids have been the same as clothes most of the time. So uh, even the you and your is really obvious there. And, and I don't know enough about poetry to necessarily be able to read this and understand what it's about right away. But because I have strong words from the passage that I'm kind of looking for, it starts to make sense. Slumbered upon yourself. That's a phrase that if someone just said that to me, I'd be like, what the heck are you talking about? Slumbered upon myself? I, what does that even mean? But now in the context of the strong words from the passage, not fully understanding yourself, like, okay, you're like driving your own life, your own body, and you're asleep at the wheel. You're kind of like, yeah, not aware of what you're doing maybe. Okay, I, that didn't make sense to me before, but because I have an idea that I have in my mind, I can much more easily interpret the poem. And that's why poems can't be scary. They're giving you the interpretation. Let's look at the rest of it, right? Your eyelids have been the same as closed, right? So eyelids closed, okay, maybe you're not understanding yourself because your eyes are closed to yourself. Like that feels like it makes sense, right? So that's probably the answer, but I, you know, it is a poem. Maybe there's some interpretation I'm not really picking up on here. Let's look at all the other choices. Choice B, these immense meadows, these interminable rivers, you are immense and interminable as they. So the first part's there, right? Um, you is, uh, he's addressing the reader. Okay. Uh, you know, interminable means it doesn't have an end. Uh, so right, write terminate means end. So interminable means unending, right? So I'll even write that in case you need to learn that word, unending. So I don't know, uh, not fully understanding yourself. Maybe if you have no ending, it's hard to understand yourself because you go on forever. But, I, you know, I don't know. I feel like I'm stretching that. That doesn't feel obvious. It certainly feels easier to just justify A. So once again, even though we have uh, a choice that maybe I could force it in, I don't want to do that. If I have a choice that fits much more naturally, then go with that choice. Let's look at C. I should have made my way straight to you long ago. So again, you is there. Uh, I should have blabbed nothing but you. I should have chanted nothing but you. I have no idea what that means. Could that mean that people are not understanding themselves? No, it sounds like maybe the author is understanding or not uh, of the reader. I, this just makes no sense to me. So the you is there, but that's not good enough to, to satisfy both of the, the strong ideas in the question. D, I will leave all and come and make the hymns of you. None has understood you, but I understand you. Okay, well, the you is still there. And this is a really big trap right here. Right, because look at they did. They 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 use the same word from the question, right? Understood, and it says none has understood you, right? N nobody has understood you. So that sounds a little bit like the right connotation, right? Not being not fully understood, but the question is very specific about this, right? The question says that they don't fully understand themselves, but choice D is adding in another person, right? It's saying like other people don't understand you. It does not say that you do not understand yourself. And that's the more important claim, right? So if you were between A and D, I totally understand, but that's a reason then to go back to that initial passage, right? They're, they're being very specific, very strong in what they want from you. So if you are confused between two choices, it is more likely that you don't fully understand what they're asking you to do. This almost reminds me a lot of those outline questions at the end where there's only one correct answer because they tell you exactly what they want from you. All of the sentences are, are fine. They're grammatically correct. You know, they say some idea, but they only one is going to actually give you what they, the, give them what the passage wants, what the question wants, the, the accomplish that goal. You have to treat this the same way is they're giving you a goal to accomplish. If you feel like two choices accomplish the goal, it's much more likely to understand the goal not the choices themselves. So yes, A is the answer here. It is a smoother fit it, and it does avoid that potential trap right there at the end of D. So just be careful of that. And that's why you always read every choice because if they had flipped it and D was at the top, you might pick D being like, oh yeah, that's definitely it. And then miss out on A, which is better. So always read every choice every time.